Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am digging up my learnings from the Honey Cake Discourse, which is Middle Discourse is 18. Uh, the link to this entire discourse is uh, given below. So you can read it for, to get your own insights. Now this discourse, na name is very kind of enticing, uh, Honey, Cake, Honey Cake Discourse. But it is, uh, but um, at, after reading it, uh, for me, it is not honey, neither honey nor cake. It's not easy that what I'm trying to say uh, uh, at this level of uh, where I am. It's a bit difficult for me to understand uh, it completely. Uh, so I'm being honest with you. But uh, do please read it at your end and do share your learnings. Right? Let's build a community where you know comments, a uh, uh, lot of different thoughts and opinions are there. So everyone can make a you know balanced view of you know about this discourse buddha was trying to say so my learnings i'm just i have uh, 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 taken out so i'll i'll be sharing so this honey cake discourse was given the name honey cake because uh, buddha said that wherever a sincere capable mendicant examines this discourse with wisdom the meaning of the teaching would give them joy and clarity so i am certainly not at that level so it will require me some more readings to get the joy and clarity uh, but yes certain things i was able to definitely get it so now the context of this discourse is that uh, Dandapani. Dandapani was the uh, brother of uh, uh, Buddha's, Buddha's birth mother, right? So Dandapani uh, questions the Buddha. So he, he had a kind of a grudge against the Buddha that, you know, uh, because the birth mother, Buddha's birth mother died after giving him birth and then Buddha left his uh, family and, you know, in search of the truth and everything. So he was like... he. He didn't share, like Buddha did not have a very kind of a cozy relationship with him, right? And uh, he had certain grudges with the Buddha. So he kind of asks uh, in a curt way that uh, ascetic uh, Buddha, what is your doctrine, right? So now Buddha's response to that is, and I'm like reproducing it verbally, uh, sorry, verb, in verb, verb, verbatim what is given the discourse. My doctrine is such that one does not conflict with anyone in this world, with its God, Maras, Brahmas. This population with its ascetics and Brahmins, its gods and humans. And it is such that perceptions do not underline the Brahman who lives detached from sensual pleasures, without doubt, stripped of worry and rid of craving for rebirth in this or that state. So basically there are two things Buddha was trying to say. That my doctrine, number one Buddha said that my doctrine is such that, that I do not have any conflict with anyone. So basically what, if you actually, whatever little I have read about the Buddha and everything, Buddha did not never ever picked up conflict against anyone. It's basically people came and picked up conflict against him because his teaching was so powerful, so deep. So when he said that, you know, he, he was totally against the caste system. He was totally against the uh, authority of the Brahmins. Like only the Brahmins can worship and do the rituals. He was totally against animal sacrifices. Now the power of his, you know, teaching actually made the people who got affected you know, uh, uh, take arguments and, you know, uh, attack him, everything, right? And Buddha was very totally, totally peaceful because he had totally given up his craving, desire, aversion, ignorance, everything. Becoming a Buddha, what basically, what becoming a Buddha does is that all the defilements have gone. So, conflicts remain in a person's life till the time the inside there are conflicts. Right? Remember that uh, one of the earlier discourses I discussed with middle discourses. When Buddha was in forests and he, before his awakening and he faced fear, Buddha waited and looked at his fear, not looking outside, but looking within him, that fear that is there. That fear is what creates fear outside. Right? So similar way, since Buddha's after awakening from Siddhartha to Buddha, all the defilements, all the Conflicts had gone within him. What is left is zero conflict and pure teaching. But people who whose conflicts have not gone, they come and you know uh, attack the Buddha and say that what you are saying is wrong and everything. So number one, Buddha said that my doctrine is such that does not conflict with anyone, Maras, Brahmas, whoever in the world, it doesn't conflict. That's the first thing. Second, Buddha said that perceptions do not underlie. That means perceptions do not bother a person a Brahmin who is totally free from insight, right? So all these perceptions that we hold, judgments that we hold, they only bother us till, till we are not clear from insight, 
right? Okay, so this is what Buddha said. Then Buddha said that driven judgments driven by pro proliferating perceptions beset a person. If they don't find anything worth approving, welcoming or getting attached to in the source from which these arise, just this is the end of the underlying tendencies to desire, repulsion, views, doubt, conceit. In the end of this is the end of taking up the rod and the sword, the end of the quarrels, arguments, disputes. So Buddha is again saying is that that these proliferations remain till the person is getting attached to anything within. Once all the attachment go, then this is the end of roar and sword and the quarrels in, of the world. Right? Then Buddha said in this discourse is that eye consciousness arises dependent on the eyes. The meeting of the three is contact. Contact creates is a condition of feeling. When you feel, you perceive. What you perceive, you think. What you think, you proliferate. What you proliferate is the source from which the judgments come. Right? So, and similarly, Buddha said about the other ear, nose, ear, ear, nose, touch, mind, touch, mind consciousness. So, then Buddha said is that, so basically Buddha is trying to say, it's like the dependent origination, dependent origination thing Buddha is trying to bring. If this, then that. So, Buddha is say, saying that, that what happens is that when you, there is a, three things that need to be present. There needs to be an eye, there needs to be an object outside. And there needs and the consciousness arises. I object which is outside and the consciousness that arises. All three create contact. Contact create feeling. Create feeling create thinking and so on. And so the judgments and all these things get created. So now Buddha is trying to say that when where there is no I, no sides, and no I consciousness, it will not be possible to discover the evidence of contact. Then when the evidence of contact is near, not there, feeling is not there, feeling is not there, perception is not there, perception is not there, thinking is not there, thinking is not there, then uh, 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 judgments don't, don't. So Buddha is trying to say is that at the source itself, you know, when something, you know, what Buddha is trying to say is that our mind through the senses sees the outer things and the consciousness gets created and then there is a chain of uh, other things that get created, right? So everything is creating from the source. So if this source at the source level only it is not created, then the other things do not create. So now my interpretation of this. Now there can be many interpretation of this. Now since I have uh, kind of gone through and studied a bit about the insight meditation uh, taught by Mahasi Sayadaw, and uh, I have also given check. You can check the. Uh, a playlist on inside meditation which is there and where I have given the reference to the Satipatthana Vipassana ebook. Basically what again uh, in the uh, inside meditation taught by Mahasi they say, Mahasi says is that see the eye, so at be mindful of the eye as eye, be mindful as the sight as sight, be mindful as the consciousness that arises as consciousness. So he always says that you can use a word like I, 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 when you are, when you just are mindful of the I, you can just say I, I, verbally, no, sorry, not verbally, mentally, sight, sight, looking, looking, consciousness, consciousness. What is important is that we need to be mindful completely, right? Be mindful of these various things that arise in us as they arise, right? What basically happens is we unconsciously live our life and then contact, contact, feeling, feeling, perception, perception, thinking, this whole chain keeps on happening. And then judgments develop. So we are like, anyways, we are sitting on a huge pile of all these judgments and defilements and everything. Right? So now what we have to do is instead of, in, you know, and all these judgments, what they do is that next time something happens, these kind of, the screen, we watch from that screen of judgment, everything. Now what we have to do, instead of watching it from the screen of judgment, we want to, we have to see the thing as it arises. Like a person is in front of you, rather than, Seeing that person from your eyes, from that screen, see that person as he is, which is like in Zen what they say, seeing things as they are. That is like their one practice, seeing things as they are. Not one practice, but it's like the core practice, right? So having that right view, right, uh, that uh, seeing things as they are, basically one is the practice of insight meditation, vipassana meditation, where you see things as they are. And second is day-to-day -day basis also. What, what I will want to do is that I will want to see the three marks of suffering in everything that I come across. What are the three marks of existence? 
impermanence, non-self and suffering. Right? These three marks of existence is present in entire creation, what Buddha said. So, for example, if I see a flower, today only I was like, I was waiting for my child to pick up this, you know, my child from school and, and there was like some plants and everything and I saw the, you know, plants and I immediately that kind of thing just came up within me that this is impermanent. This flower, these plants will, will wither up and will wither away. And similar is my body, my mind, my concepts, my idea that I hold, my near and dear ones. So we need to keep that thing in, you know, uh, kind of, you know, have that right view uh, uh, as we move around in the, in the world. So when we do that, we do not create unnecessary kind of things which end up, you know, judgments. Uh, neither we watch from the screen of judgments, uh, not, neither do we watch things with the, from the screen of judgment, nor we create new judgments. Right? So this is my learning from this discourse. It's a, uh, uh, that's why I said, Please do your reading and you will get your own insights and you will be able to share uh, uh, and do share your learnings uh, below in the comments. I hope this video was useful. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.